environment actually work and how this has led to improvement in, uh, in policy and, and health outcomes in Sri Lanka. And in many ways, this can serve as a model for other countries in the region. Imoka told us a little bit about this at the Children's Environmental Health Workshop on, I don't know how many days it was ago now, it seems a long, long time ago, but in reality it was three or four days. And um, so it's my pleasure to ask Anoka to come up to the, uh, to the podium to give us a, a short presentation on how to do it the Sri Lankan way. <laughs> Good afternoon to you all and thank you very much for this, I guess, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, just to briefly describe about the Sri Lankan experience on how we are, like, you know, working together with the Ministry of Environment. So, uh, basically, what we have to understand is, it's very important to realize that when it comes to the environment, there are so many stakeholders. So as the Ministry of Health that I'm representing, we cannot do things on our own. We have to get together with other stakeholders, especially the Ministry of Environment. So if the other stakeholders, like, you know, don't unite together, probably the objective, the holistic objective would not be able, we would not be able to achieve. Uh, well, Sometimes, especially the medical professionals from the Ministry of Health, they think that working in environmental and occupational health areas are quite challenging and difficult. Why? Because one thing is these are like, you know, developing every day. And on the other hand, you need to have technical skills to work in this area. But on the other hand, you need to develop your soft skills. In fact, working with others, I think that is the beauty of working in this area. So I will just tell you certain examples where yeah, we have worked together with the Ministry of Environment in fulfilling the national agendas on environmental health. Well, recently we banned polythene and plastic, especially the lunch sheets and then the, the shopping bags. It's a big problem in Sri Lanka. Not only due to the, the issues of um, the persistence, but also it's a big problem in terms of vector-borne diseases like dengue. So these become like, you know, the small vessels, the collection of water inside those things. They happen to be the breeding sites for dengue mosquitoes. So what we did was, like you know, the Ministry of Environment, they appointed a committee, and then of course, we were in that committee, and we were giving the health justification. And then we managed to convince the other stakeholders the importance of banning these items so that it is going to be uh, beneficial for Sri Lanka. So now the secret I guess is now when you work with other stakeholders, you really have to respect each other and then you have to identify the role of each ministry and then you have to identify maybe committed people and then champions from different areas. And another example would be like, you know, phasing out of asbestos. So again, I guess the health justification was strong enough to see that the other stakeholders understood the importance of phasing out asbestos. And uh, just to tell you about the health structure in Sri Lanka, because we work at the national level and it's very important to 
hold hands with other stakeholders at the national level. But that is not going to achieve the goals in terms of environmental health. We take policy decisions, but those things are being implemented at the grassroots level. So, therefore, you have to strengthen each level in terms of working together with intersectoral stakeholders. So we have done that at provincial level. The health ministry officials getting together with the Ministry of Environment people as well as the Ministry of Local Authority. And then at the grassroots level, where we have like 335 areas of medical officers of health, where those areas are manned by all MBBS qualified medical officers. We have the uh, preventive health sector staff, especially the public health inspectors working in the areas of environmental and occupational health. So that is at the district level. They have committees and then they work together, especially respecting each other and then identifying their roles. So I suppose that has led to the successful implementation of so many environmental health activities in Sri Lanka. So maybe uh, uh, we can have evidence, but it's very important to put those things into action. I mean, I was at the CKDU symposium in the morning, and I was thinking, okay, we can go on finding the etiology, but the people are dying. So we need to do something for them. We can split our hairs and then, like, you know, trying to identify the causes, but not at the expense of the lives of the poor people. So if we don't answer their questions, I always believe, as health professionals, I think we fail. So therefore, whatever the evidence that we have in terms of environmental health or occupational health, we have to put it into practice. And then putting this into practice needs the stakeholder involvement, getting together with all other sectors. Now, health has to be considered in a holistic way. I always think, okay, Somebody looking at the ear, somebody looking at the heart, somebody looking at the colon. But is that the health we want or is it something holistic? And what we have to understand is if you forget the environment, if you forget the occupational health, I suppose then we will fail. So the success, the, the secret is getting together with all stakeholders, and then finally trying to give a better life for the people who really don't have much say, but of course, they are just, you know, counting on us, the professionals, to see that their lives become healthier. Thank you very much.